as you can see my workshop is a mess and uh, I'm trying to figure out what to do about it and the current plan is to build some shelves some shelves and I want to use this piece of wood and this piece of wood and it's gonna be tricky because I'm thinking I want to make an L type shelf the design will become clear momentarily So no, this isn't just a woodworking video. You can watch a lot of people build shelves, watch a lot of people build shelves that are much better at it than I am. So I figure I should, you know, give it a little pizzazz or something. So uh, while I build this thing, I'm going to talk about God. So those who know me will know that I meditate and pray a fair amount. And in a context like that, all this stuff happens. You have all these interesting experiences um, it's obviously not always clear what they mean, how to interpret it. Nevertheless, there were five times that it really felt like I was getting a direct instruction. Obviously, a statement like that probably takes some explaining before it means anything to anyone but me. But anyway, I know this isn't just a woodworking video, but it's also not just a theology video. So let's just pretend that makes sense. Take it for what it is. You know, it means something to me. So having planned how I'm going to cut the main board... Um, you know, the, the bottom and then the second level and the third level, there's three levels, one, two, and then I need the bottom to be stable is my thinking. My current view though, is that, you know, about nine inches per level will be good. So that would be, that's 18 and then, you know. And so anyway, I felt like I got these direct instructions and conveniently they were all pretty wholesome. You know, it wasn't all like, kill them all, you know, type of voices in your head or anything like that. Um, and as I recall them, the things I heard were, one, to exercise more. Two, do more yoga. Later on, number three, I got another reminder about yoga. Four was to think more about how I affect other people. And lastly, number five, was to build an altar. So I ran into a problem, which is that I'm planning to make these legs and to do 12 legs at nine inches each, I need nine feet of wood. And I'm finding all kinds of random pieces of, of like wood, but they're different sizes. And uh, this one's kind of warped. However, however, I found an answer. Over here is a piece of, I think it's somebody's like wooden bed post that they left outside and it's extremely heavy. And I've really wanted to use this for something. And I almost use it for this product to actually be the, the base of the, of the shelf, but I wanted wider shelves. Conveniently, this is nine inches across. So I could actually cut as many legs out of this as I want and still have shitload left for something else. And they seem very strong. They can be as wide as I want them to be. So I'm pretty tempted on this right now. Um, it's about two inches, which is the, about nearly the limit of my, of my circle saw, but I'm feeling good about this. So I haven't actually built the altar yet and I feel weird about it. You know, I had the thought like if tomorrow I learned I was going to die. One of the first things I'd want to get in order would be the building of this altar. And you know, I'd want to tell friends or family like, Hey, help me get this thing done. You know, God told me to build this thing and I failed to build it. So um, I knew this was going to be a little long, but this, it was just a fuck up. So I'm going to just do some little bit of adjustments to get the ends to be quite right. Cause I'm going to be looking at this a great deal over the next while. And there is some selfish fear in there as there often is in the context of religion. I mean, do you really expect the very best things for those who receive a direct instruction to do X, Y, Z, and then they kind of don't do it. Is that what a badass protagonist would do? Probably. Uh, so the pieces are as close as I feel like getting them right now. Um, as one YouTuber said, we ain't making a piano. I also need to make holes um, for dowel rod, the dowel rods I'm gonna use to connect these uh, to the thing. So anyway, so far I'm not dead or incapacitated yet as far as I can tell, um, but I still haven't built the altar. 
And so, okay, you know, you start thinking, like, well, what even is an altar? You know, what's an altar versus a shrine? Do I put incense on it? Do I have to sacrifice animals on it? I don't know. I even went to a quarry some months ago when I lived in Utah, and I bought some stones that looked appropriate. You know, I was going to stack this one broad stone on top of two other stones and call that an altar. Kind of looked like an altar. That might have at least technically fulfilled my obligation. Um, but I didn't know where to put it. And it kind of seemed like bad juju to just leave an altar somewhere and then not tend it, right? Again, like, do you really want to be, reference class-wise, one of these guys that just leaves an altar untended? So I continued to procrastinate. But I did keep thinking about it. What is an altar? Now, one conclusion I've had thus far is that an altar is a place for making offerings. And this idea of God, or the good, or your highest light, or something. Maybe these are something worth making an offering to. So this altar is then a, a place to offer of yourself, to spend what is dear of something even more valuable. You know, in Exodus and Numbers, they go on at length repetitively about this idea that you don't just bring your shittiest animals to the slaughter. You don't bring your three-eyed, you know, Chernobyl calf to, to give up to God. You bring your calf or ram without defect or blemish. In other words, you bring something dear to you. So I've made pilot holes. That's, that's the bottom, pointing up. I've made pilot holes here, and then I extended them through here, and then I extended these holes through those legs, and uh, now I need to widen those holes and stick dowels in. Apparently Bach would write on his sheet music, Soli Deo Gloria, glory to God alone. Another such saying one finds carved on marble statues, etc., is ad maiorum dei gloriam, for the greater glory of God. Uh, this one is attributed to St. Ignatius of Loyola, who founded the Jesuits. And to some of the greatest creators in the world, in history, sayings like these have been a reminder that there's something greater than ourselves to which our work can be dedicated. It seems that those who aspire greatly, sometimes, take their aspirations seriously enough to think about what they're aspiring to, and how total or complete or far-reaching that is. So I'm not going to lie. <clears throat> Some of these ended up pretty good. Um, but some of them look a little uneven. And there's a bit of a problem. Because ordinarily I would hide that by um, just sanding it off. But the thing is there's some finish from the previous the bedpost thing that was on here. So anyway, this thing's going to be a little janky. I can try to tilt it a little bit. Some parts are worse than others. Uh, try to fuck with it a little bit in the last phase. That said, it's incredibly stable. It's incredibly, like, this shit is moving nowhere. I didn't put glue in there, um, but I don't need to. It really is just quite strong. Now, to be absolutely clear here, I'm not building an altar in this video. I'm building shelves. I, I promise I'm trying to draw the connection. But it got me thinking that... There are some similarities between altars and places where we create things, like a workspace or a workshop. In both, we spend something. In one, we spend an unblemished calf. In the other, the sweat of our brow. In both, we hope our efforts bear fruit. Then the act of spending, we are in fact creating. In the religious context, we create alignment and closeness to God. In the creative context, assuming we aren't fully mercenary about it, we hope to come closer to something, you know, whatever we're after. And it varies by the person. All right, so this thing's done. Um, I could give it a little sanding. Uh, I was thinking earlier about, about uh, painting it, but the thing is, um, it is really fucking heavy. Um, you know... Certainly liftable, but like, you know, that's one arm. Now, I could have made this with half inch plywood, but um, the task, again, was kind of build using what I had on hand. And uh, it's got a few flaws, but it's, it's absolutely going to get the job done. Um, <clears throat> essentially made a 
parking garage for my tools. See, now I want to like film shit in here. Um, anyway, so more importantly than all that is actually getting it up on the shelf and I'm waiting for a, um, a non-stick mat that will, in addition to helping this thing not slip, not that it's going anywhere, um, will protect that uh, little wardrobe there, which is the whole reason I have to make this thing in the first place. At any rate, as far as altars and creative spaces, both of which could be considered places of birth giving, they're best kept clean. They're best kept ordered, conducive to right action. That is to say, if you had an altar or a temple, you'd at least want to get all your shit off the floor. You'd want to solve the situation where you're pushing through piles of incense sticks and ox livers and so on. And as a creative space, I figured this also applies to a workshop. Now, just because the workshop is clean doesn't mean every offering you make there is going to be worthy. We're reminded of Cain and Abel, God accepting the sacrifice of one, rejecting that of the other. But if a person has a good spirit, he can certainly hope to be received in that spirit. We may ultimately hope to be accepted for truly great creations, but in the meantime, we can remember that greatness starts with a great spirit, it demands diligence, it takes a great deal of time. It is done, and honestly, it's incredible. There's a lot of space in here that I don't even know how to use yet. Um, and then yes, I've got it on the non-stick mat, so this shit's going nowhere. Boom. And I'm reminded of a line from a Sikh prayer that a friend once showed me. Even kings and emperors with mountains of property and oceans of wealth, these are not even equal to an ant who does not forget God.